This video will discuss the anti-symmetry principle to deal with the fact that electrons are indistinguishable. Okay, so one problem that we can note thus far in our analysis of the molecular Hamiltonian is that there's no spin in our molecular Hamiltonian. We noted that there was kinetic energy for electrons and nuclei. There is attraction or repulsion between electrons and nuclei, but there's nothing in there that indicates spin. And we know from general chemistry and the Pauli exclusion principle that we can't have uh, two electrons with the same spin in the same orbital. So how are we going to fix uh, this and similar problems like that? So the way we fix that is by enforcing what we call the anti-symmetry principle. So this is treated as a postulate of, of quantum mechanics, just in the same way all the other postulates are. It's not something we prove. Um, you can prove it if you go a little bit more deeply into uh, relativistic quantum mechanics, but for non-relativistic quantum mechanics, we're pretty much going to treat this as a postulate, something that is stated without proof and then just uh, taken moving forward. So that is the following. If we have some wave function, electronic wave function of a bunch of electrons, we have uh, the coordinates of electron 1, 2, etc., all the way up to electron n. If I pick electron i and I pick electron j and I swap the two of them, so electron i is now where electron j was, electron j is now where electron i was, what should happen is the following. We should get the exact same wave function except for the sign should be switched. And this should be true for every electron, so i and j could be any value between 1 and n as long as i and j were different numbers. And in the Hartree products video we discussed where um, we would have a many electron wave function which is the product of a bunch of orbitals, a bunch of one electron wave functions, this isn't true. So a Hartree product for two electrons might be something like psi 1 2 equals psi 1 1 times psi 2 2. We have orbital 1 with electron 1 times orbital 2 with electron 2. So what happens if we switch the labels 1 and 2 here? Well now electron 2 is in orbital 1 and electron 1 is in orbital 2. But you'll notice that if we you know, swap things around this does not end up being equal to uh, the case where we have switched the sign. Because 1 and 2 are just dummy labels here so if we kind of switch those back we end up with the same wave function not a wave function with a switch sign. So instead what we can use is an anti-symmetric linear combination. So we can use a wave function where we have equal probability of electron 1 being in wave function 1 and electron 2 being in wave function 1 as the reverse. Electron 1 in wave function 2 and electron 2 in wave function 1 or I might, I might call these orbitals to be more clear. Okay, And there's an opposite sign there. We also have a normalization constant because um, that's going to work out to when we uh, multiply psi star times psi and integrate this should be equal to 1 and uh, we end up getting two terms which don't cancel in that case. Okay, so what is psi 1, 2? It's this. What is psi 2, 1? Well, we write down the same function but we swap all the electron 1 and electron 2 labels and now we get psi 1, 2, psi 2, 1 minus psi 2, 2, psi 1, 1. You'll notice that this term is the same as that term, except for a negative sign. And this term is the same as that term, except for a switch in sign from negative to positive. So every term is equal, but in opposite sign. So this means that psi 2, 1 is equal to negative psi 1, 2, just as we need to be the case to satisfy the anti-symmetry principle. All right, so that was simple enough to do for a set of two electrons. What if we have three electrons? Well, for three electrons, it starts getting more complicated, but we can do it if we include all the permutations here of one, two, and three being in which orbital they can be in. There are six ways to arrange uh, six permutations of three electrons in three orbitals, and those are all six of those there. And if every time you switch two electrons, you ch change the sign, you end up with this progression of positives and negatives that I have here. Switch the sign every time you exchange, normalize by the number of terms, 
and you will get once again a term that complies with the anti-symmetry principle. If you swap any two of these labels and write down what happens here, you'll notice that you get the same wave function with a switch sign. So this gets quite obnoxious to start writing out uh, by hand all the time because for n electrons, there are going to be n factorial terms. For 2, there's 2 times 1, 2 terms. 3, there's 3 times 2 times 1, 6 terms. 4, there will be 24. 5, there will be 120. Then 720. Then very quickly, it starts getting out of hand. And you have a normalization constant of 1 over the square root of n factorial. So we need a more systematic way of writing this type of expression, which doesn't involve us just writing in exploding a number of terms as this uh, factorial number increases exponentially in, in complexity very, very quickly.